Hello guys, how's it going? Today we need to talk about the tropics again because already, I mean, we have Sam, but we also have two other tropical disturbances that have a large chance of development, and then we also have another one that has a moderate chance of development. So there's a lot going on, and we need to just update you guys on all of it. Anyways, for today's comment of the day, I want to know, outside of Sam, which one of these disturbances do you think has the best chance of developing uh, into something, a hurricane or possibly even our next major hurricane? Let me know in the comments down below what your opinion is, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Also, be sure to smash that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. Let's get straight into this video, and first things first, we're just taking a look straight at that five-day graphical tropical weather outlook where we can see everything that is going on. You see Hurricane Sam, you see an orange disturbance there to the east of Bermuda. That's a non-threat for the east coast, uh, or pretty much any land at this point outside of maybe Atlantic Canada. Obviously, on that current trajectory, you can't roll them out, but it does look likely that this one will kind of just stay over water. Sam, thankfully, has trended east on the models. We'll talk about that a little bit later on. But the threat for the east coast uh, has gone down. The threat for Bermuda has gone up. Also, again, Atlantic Canada cannot be ruled out with this one either. We'll talk about that as well later on. Also, and then we have our two red disturbances down there, which have a high chance of development. So we're getting a very, very active period here in the tropics. Obviously very concerning. Let's just walk through these one by one so we can see the actual percentages. This orange one, we have a 50% chance of development here in this orange one. Uh, so we're going to be watching this one very closely. Again, the good news is it is east of Bermuda, which means it shouldn't be any sort of a threat for them, which is good news. We have this one down kind of in the middle. It's in between Sam and another disturbance. So it's kind of in the middle of our main development region, which is the area in between the Caribbean and Africa, by the way. This one, you can't actually see the percentage because it's like underneath everything. I don't know how that even happened, but it actually is an 80% chance. I went and read it. So this one is an 80% chance of development. And same story with this one that's over Africa and about to move into our main development region. Right behind that one we just took a look at, this one also has an 80% chance of development. That's very high chances, especially for back-to-back -back storms, and especially when they're coming behind a major hurricane, Category 4 hurricane, uh, Hurricane Sam. Speaking of Hurricane Sam, let's take a look at that cone forecast. And the good news is that at least Bermuda is on the very west side of the cone here. The bad news is that it's a very close call for you guys. So we're going to be watching it closely. Hopefully this storm will be a bit weaker by time it's even a threat for you guys. That's all we can really hope for at this point. We can see that um, by time we're reaching tomorrow, and even through about Thursday, it should be staying on the same trajectory, but we're expecting a northward curve there uh, sometime in between Thursday and Friday, and that is when we should get that directly northward trajectory, which will take it either just to the east of Bermuda, possibly be a threat to Bermuda, uh, and then it should head north from that point. So that's obviously going to be a major nail biter there for Bermuda. We're going to have to watch that one very closely. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on. We're going to take a look at the satellite imagery for this one, the spaghetti model guidance, and even intensity guidance for Hurricane Sam. Uh, then we're going to take a little bit of a look at actually some of the dust going on and then our European probability model in just a little while. So stay tuned for all of that stuff. All right, now here we are taking a look at the satellite imagery. And for a Category 4 hurricane, I mean, this one actually is not looking the best uh, and it was looking a lot better as of yesterday but you can see it doesn't even have an eye right now so i don't know what it's struggling with too much but it does look like over the past couple of hours on our satellite imagery that it is kind of recovering and possibly redeveloping an eye you can see those two tiny yellow dots in there in between the black and gray areas that is where that storm is trying to redevelop an eye so it is possible that we see that happen uh, throughout the day today Speaking about spaghetti model guidance, here is our GEFS model. We're actually going to go over every single model group here that we have available to us. And this one does appear like it will potentially pose a threat for Newfoundland uh, or maybe even Nova Scotia. Uh, we see that the mean average comes pretty close. The blue one is our control line, um, and that one kind of does a loop-de-loop -loop over no uh, Newfoundland there. So that is very interesting. We also have a lot of individual models kind of bringing it onshore to Canada uh, at different locations. We even have one 
hitting New England. Thankfully, that would be a weaker storm by time it would be hitting there, according to this model. So that's all we can really hope for. But that seems to be kind of an outlier, obviously, with one model showing a New England impact. I wouldn't be too worried about it. I would be aware, but not worried, for sure. Here's our European ensemble model. And this one gets a lot more interesting. We can see that the mean average, uh, the, which is the black line, by the way, which is the mean average of every single one of these individual lines, takes it well offshore of Newfoundland. Enough to bring some impacts to the very eastern shores of Newfoundland, but not really going to, you know, bring anything major if that black line is where it goes. But we do have numerous individual models that take it on shore and kind of do some weird loop-de-loops and then head out. This would be very impactful, especially with that loop that it does, because that would bring more rainfall and just more time with the storm over top of you. So we are going to be watching this very close for the potential impacts there for the eastern regions there of our friends up in Canada. Here's the Canadian ensemble model. And as you can see, this one is kind of the same story, except the mean average on this one actually does take it on shore of Newfoundland. You can see this one is a little bit more all over the place, and that is very, very normal for this model to do. But it does have many impacts for uh, Canada there, and then many that are still out to sea as well. So that's all we can hope for. Individual models here real quickly, and as you can see, we do have a few of these going on shore to Canada, but we also have a few going kind of out to sea, but it's kind of worrisome to see kind of a trajectory there, a, a big grouping of models heading directly for that east coast of Newfoundland. We're going to have to watch that very closely. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to move on, and we're going to take a look at the intensity guidance, then we're going to take a little bit of a look at the dust so we can see what we can expect for the next week or so in the tropics, and then we're going to take a look at the European probability model to see what all of these tropical cyclones will likely do. All right, now here we are taking a look at that intensity guidance, and as you can see, uh, we're at a category four, like I said before, a vast majority here take us down to category three status throughout the day today. And we kind of hover in that for about the next four or five days. And then it starts to weaken after that point, finally heading back towards being nothing. We do see a small minority group of models here that you can see that are heading kind of up in the trajectory uh, in the medium to long range, which does have me kind of watchful here and, um, a little bit worried, but not too bad. The, the good thing here is that a majority of the models take it down in intensity to three, and then eventually back towards two, one, and tropical storm. We do see a group of about five models that take it a little bit weaker in the short range, and then we can see it recovers back up, even one hovering around category five status at days five. Very interesting stuff, and we're going to need to watch for this. So there is a small chance that this one actually goes up in intensity, but a much larger chance that it weakens from this point looking forward. Here's that dust, like I said, and there is some pretty potent dust out there in our main development region right now. This should become a little less potent by the time we're reaching about Friday, October 1st. I can't believe we're already talking about October 1st. We're almost already there. September has literally flown by. Um, and then we can see by the time we're reaching about October 3rd, uh, we see another potent area of dust heading off of Africa. Uh, very interesting. And it's also interesting to notice that we haven't had any homegrown systems in a little while. Uh, for the Gulf, Caribbean, East Coast, and that is where these storms would have flourished because we've had no dust and no shear in these areas, yet no storms have developed. It's very interesting how that works. That mostly, to me, just shows how crazy last year was because it takes a lot to make a very active hurricane season come together. I mean, the, the dust has to be going correctly, the shear has to be going correctly, and then you have to have storms developing in the first place. You have to have warm sea surface temperatures, it really all had to come together just right. It's super interesting how that works. Now, for today's confidence tab, we're at a four out of six today. Uh, a lot of these are obviously undeveloped. We see Sam, and there is some uncertainties there. So we're at about mid-range on the confidence tab. For today's comment of the day, which we forgot to do on, um, I think, yesterday, James Marr said, it's been pretty average, but overall good. I should probably tell you what I'm talking about first. So, sorry about that. I asked you guys how September has gone so far, and that's what James Marr said. I don't know why I did that so backwards right there, but whatever. For today's patron, highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, John Ben Benich, James Wade, Dovey Nagel, Little the Pan, and Donna Carnez, alongside our diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Kotalesa, Catbite, Charles Stinnett, Cindy Klein, Mark J., Luke Vallejo, Gary, John Khaleesi, Dwight Phelan, and Stephen Crenenthal. If you'd like to be part of this very awesome 
Patreon end screen of the day. You can do so by joining our very amazing Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. I would also thank our channel members, Hair Farms One, Catbite, Steven Fan, and Jeremy Cox as well. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to smash that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. I will see you guys in the next video.